company with a wonderful name of Iterate, uh, and we're gonna hear build your own little Memex with Avashka. Big round of applause. <laughs> Meine Damen und Herren, jetzt sollen wir ein, eine kleine Memex mit Babaschka machen. For the benefit of everyone involved, this will probably be the last German uh, from, from my presentation. So I have started my stopwatch. Uh, first, big thanks. Uh, this uh, is kind of a synthesis of a lot of ideas. I'm not going to read all the names. Uh, some of the names on there are sitting here, so you guys are, are great. Um, during this talk, I will ask for good things. Uh, so I've, I've filled out the number one here. Uh, knowing where your IDs come from influences references. That's a good thing. So I'm wondering, can I, can I get one good thing from the audience? Simple made easy. Simple made easy. Simple made easy is a good thing. Can I get one more thing? Immutability, a great thing. Okay, back to the, uh, the topic. So, the title of this talk is Build Your Own Little Memex with Babashka. My name is Theodore. Uh, I'm on the internet uh, with, with those handles. Yeah, and this is my first ever closure conference talk, so I'm super nervous. <laughs> um, links and slides will be found uh, on this URL. Um, Okay, so uh, the agenda for today uh, is first to define what is a Memex, and I will give a brief history of the ideas. You've already gotten a super brief version. I will give a less brief version. Then we will discuss how to build your own little Memex with Babashka. And in part three, we will look at Memexes applied as a tool for exploration. So, part one, what is a Memex? A brief history of ideas. This is a Memex. A Memex is a machine, and it supports information capture. You can put information into the machine, and the machine stores information. So this is uh, a tape, because the article, uh, as, uh, as mentioned, I believe it was from 48, but I'm, I might be wrong. 45? Oh, then points to you. And it also supports information retrieval. So we need, want to get information out of the machine. <clears throat> there was this uh, old sociologist researcher called Niklas Luhmann, uh, who started discussing his practice of working with slipboxes and Settelkasten. And he had a, a filing cabinet system. So he had a bunch of physical notes. He had physical documents. And they had tiny IDs on them. And they were linked together. So we tried to have tiny atomic ideas and push those out. And it worked great for him. He was really prolific. He wrote 50 books and a lot of articles. So it made him productive. So what if we take this piece of paper and make it a virtual piece of paper on a computer? That is something Ted Nelson said we should do. And he coined the term as hypertext. He has a lot of a lot more context on, on what hypertext is, but links. There needs to be links if something is supposed to be hypertext. So suppose that our notes of paper describe physics experiment stuff. You have a piece of paper here which describes an electron particle experiment, and then you have something about weights and speeds of particles, and then you have a proton particle experiment, and then you have some speed, mass, energy, equilibrium, and where there's researchy stuff. Links could be good to link together research. So this is what Tim Berners-Lee was working at at CERN. And he connected pieces of paper together, and he managed to serve these over HTTP and invented the World Wide Web. But. He already Im invented Memexes, so the, the problem is solved, right? You just write <laughs> open bracket, exclamation mark, doc type, HTML, HTML uh, head, title, build, your own, build yourself a little uh, Memex with Babashka and title and head and, and all the other tags. And do we, do we want to write this? Is this the, the end goal? So 
Two properties of Memexus that I think are good that we should have are frictionless capture. It should be easy to get a piece of information in and frictionless linking. It should be easy to create link because if it's not easy to capture and link, then we will probably not use it. And this spawned personal knowledge management tools and some personal knowledge management tools are Ormod which was released in 2003, TiddlyWiki, which was released in 2004. Uh, I didn't find exact dates for ROM research and Orgrom. ROM research is a linking, note-taking thing, and Orgrom implements some of the ideas from ROM research into org mode. And I think these tools are absolutely amazing, and they, they support this really, really well. But I'm curious about collective knowledge management and what we lost when we went from the web to these proprietary apps is the web, web nativeness and I think the web is a great thing. I think files are great and I also think Babashka is great. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> so I, I, I think we should add two, two things to our list of properties, list of desired properties for, for Memexes. So there's capture linking. I also want frictionless sharing. It should be really easy to publish this on the web with all the power from the web, not just like some crappy export. And it should be easy to extend our system with code. So these are the properties that I want. <clears throat> okay. So a guy named William Gibson said that the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. And you could say that blogs, Wikipedia, newsletters, and closure DRF are already examples of this. We as a community, we learn by writing, by writing stuff. Nikita, you write stuff, you have a great blog, I love your blog. It's amazing. So this isn't necessarily new. People know this and do this. And Closure DRF, it can be argued, is a Memex. Alex collects content, it goes into, into the thing. The thing is at closure.org slash news slash news. And people read the content. They read the announcement in the news and article thing that he posts, and they might, might go here. And does anyone know why it's slash news slash news? Why is it double news? Is it? Postmodern news. <laughs> <laughs> there we have it. OK, prior work. I'm not happy with the title of this slide, but it's. I've, I've done some work on this. I've tried tackling this myself, and I tried using Orgrom out of the box for a while. It's an Emacs-based system where you kind of do the stuff in Emacs and Emacs Lisp, and I have tremendous respect for the author of Orgrom. I think it's absolutely amazing. But I prefer Clojure to Emacs Lisp, so I, I want to invest in my Clojure skills and not necessarily that much in my Emacs Lisp skills. Uh, so I've kind of been, been taking this and then trying to take more control and I've built my messy site. So this is my little Memex. It's on play.teod.eu. That's the URL. You can go to it. And it's, it's messy. Uh, the HTML part looks, looks okay, but behind the scenes, there's make files, there's orgroom, there's, I think, 1,500 plus lines of Babashka. The main script is 1,000 lines. And I've lost control and I'm not able to extend it any further. So, this is too complex. There are too many dependencies, and I, I don't want to continue on, on this path. So, the desired Memex properties. I would like there to be simple pieces. Simple pieces of knowledge and simple pieces of tooling that can be easily extended. I would like to support multiple source formats. I realize that some people like to write an org at work, people like Markdown. And I would like to be able to model knowledge well at work, not only for my personal endeavor. And close your namespaces with markdown comments. That's, that's a great way to, uh, to model knowledge. I would like to extend it with closure. I don't think I need to persuade people here. That's, that's nice. And I would like nice editor integrations. I would like a, a smooth experience to use this from VS Code, from Emacs, from all the other editors that we uh, might want to support. <laughs> I speak really fast when I get engaged. On to the second interlude. We, we said that references was a good thing. Simple made easy is a good thing. Uh, are there any more good things? Just shout out. Chocolate. Chocolate is a good thing. Can I have two more good things? Community. Community is good. Yeah. 
Sherry, I agree. Amazing. I, I've, I've added uh, trees and moving water because I think trees and moving water are, are good things. <laughs> okay, part two. How to build your own little Memex with, with Bawashka. So, Memex operations. Now, this is, this is work in progress. I think these are the operations that are needed. So, I'm just going to go through them. There needs to be a way to make a new document. Uh, and the arguments to that operation, there needs to be like, there is the Memex, and there is a UID, and there is a slug that ends up in the URL. I think we should have good human readable URLs because then it's possible to actually remember the thing. Uh, and there needs to be a title. There needs to be a way to make a link to a content in MMX addressed by a UUID. There needs to be a way to list up all the documents from a MMX so that you can make your index HTML page. And there needs to be a way to convert uh, the MMX into HTML files or hiccup or, or something that's, yeah, you can get the information out. Okay. So, I think this architecture makes sense this far. So, if we have different source formats down below, org mode, markdown, ASCII doc, closure namespace with markdown, whatever you want, we can extend this. Then we make a library on top of that that's just a closure library that runs on Babashka and the JVM. I think it makes sense to use Pandoc because it's great. Pandoc has a way to read all these formats. So if we use Pandoc, then we can work only on Pandoc's intermediate representation rather than working on all of those things. If you have never seen Pandoc before, Pandoc makes it way easier. We don't have to write a parser for each format if we choose to use Pandoc. On top of that, I want a tiny CLI. And on top of that CLI, we can write plugins. So we can write a VS Code plugin, an Emacs plugin, other plugins. And if we do this right, I don't think we necessarily need to have one way to do this either. So this is a library. People can choose to use it, or people can choose to not use it because they want their, their own thing. So <clears throat> in my second draft for a system that I want to replace my old big messy thing, I, I've started and I've written an experimental Memex which has an API which is 100 lines, which roughly res reflects the structure that I wanted. I've added two uh, other empty namespaces. So this, there's a CLI, which is empty, and a contrib.clj. And my idea for the contrib is to have an easy place to put functions. So if there's a function that's missing that you want, we can, we can put it there. And while we're exploring, then everyone can work on the same version of the artifact. <coughs> OK. So, demo. OK, so I'm just going to demonstrate my old system. This is a file. This is the same file in a local preview. Uh, so it says localhost porch up there, because you can't read that way back. So I'm just going to follow my script. It says, oh. Uh, I normally use Sway. Sway doesn't support this, so I'm using a window manager that I don't know. So I'm sorry if I do stupid things. OK, so we're going to create a new page for Niklas Luhmann. And we're going to use that with the uh, create action. And we choose the slug as Niklas Luhmann. And we choose the title as Niklas Lu. Mom, and this is a remote reference, and it's in English. So we wait for a bit because the old system is slow. Make files are actually now being generated, so there's like changes here. Yeah, don't pay too much attention to the old system. So this is Niklas Luhmann's page. Now we have a new page. We want to see what our script was, and here I'm placing caps lock again. So we want this line. Uh, and we go back to Niklas Luhmann's page. We write this. Now we make. We close it. And now we replace Niklas with Niklas Luhmann, his node. 
And this is still the old system, so it's still org ROM based, but we can navigate to it. And if we rebuild and go to the HTML page, then uh, it didn't refresh because the refreshing is a little bit flaky and it didn't do this. So, okay, I didn't build. There we go. So now, Niklas Luhmann has a page. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to continue on my script. So I'm going to follow this URL. Uh, and I think I already have it open here. Yeah, so open. I want to make this. Okay. Make public. Oh. <laughs> so this is stupid. I'll finish the, the talk and then I can do it uh, in a second. So I'll, I'll return to the slides now. I'm just checking where I am at time. 16 minutes. Okay, yeah. So that was the old complex system in action. Uh, the new simple system doesn't work well yet, but contributions are very, very much welcome. I would like to see actual use, and I think we should do this. And if people want to try out things early on, then that's, that's amazing. Um. <laughs> yeah, okay, good things. Can I have five, five more new things, uh, five more good things? Flowers. Flowers. Flowers are great. Dogs. Dogs. Dogs? Dogs. Dogs. <laughs> Sunny days. Sunny days. Beer. Beer. One more. Beaches. Again. Beaches. Beaches. Amazing. I would like to add two things. I would like to propose that exploring your curiosity is a good thing. And that exploring or and that cultivating your taste is a good thing. Asking yourselves these questions, it's, it's worthwhile. <laughs> so, Memex is applied as a tool for exploration. Why, why should we do this? Should we do this just to structure the world because we want to control the world or should we use it for a purpose? And what are you curious about? I think that's a good question to ask yourself. What are you curious about now? Why? Uh, why are you curious about the things that you are curious about right now? And explore that. What's good? What do you like? Why do you like the things that you like? Why do you have the preferences that you like? So, yeah. My process right now is I give it a title, I put it in my MMX and I start exploring. I'm not going to say that everyone should be writing their own thing and cultivating their own taste and doing exploratory work on the internet. That's a choice, and perhaps text isn't your preferred format. Perhaps you'd like to draw or make a video or do something else. It's up to you. So, I created a Slack channel uh, on the Clojure Slack. If you go into Little Memexes, I'll post the link uh, later there. It's, if you're interested in this, I would like to discuss. Yes, okay. So, we are approaching the end of the things that I had planned to say. And I just want to comment on, this talk has been really theory heavy. What are memexes? What is information? What is theory? And there is another piece of this. How does everything happen, happen in practice? It's actually good things happening. I'm really excited about Spartans next talk. In my mind, it's kind of going to be about everything. He said it's going to be about ecosystems. So it's a big, big picture. Uh, so we'll see. Okay. That's my talk. Thank you so much. So I, I've tried using LogSeq a little bit. Uh, I started using Worm Research in the summer of 2020, and that, I think, is before LogSeq was a thing. I considered migrating to LogSeq because LogSeq is open source, and it, I think it's written in Clojure, uh, and it's, it's good. It doesn't have a mobile app, so I use, use Roam for that. But specifically 
for this talk. The thing that strikes me is the web nativeness. Uh, oh. I'm not sure if I can find the exact slide. But I, I felt I was too far from the HTML. I want to be able to just inline something. I want to be, think about producing HTML. I'm not saying don't use Logsic, uh, but I think in order to cultivate an online presence, it perhaps does one good thing. Dustin Getz, the author of Electric Closure, is using Logsic for his kind of personal thing, thing on the web. Uh, so I think it's great, but you don't have full control over the HTML. One of the motivations for you to start this project was frictionless sharing. I find that processing knowledge, uh, processing what I'm learning and following my curiosity gives me information that's maybe uniquely interesting to me. Mm. What's your experience or have you tried sharing the, the, kind of the outcome of your minutes with other people? <sighs> Very good question. I structured uh, my website, my Mamex, in a way that I can put a lot of crap on there, but I just put the crap down below. So I have a few, few decent articles. I can just show you how the front page looks. So uh, I'm just going to blow it up. So th there's a random page button. Uh, and then you kind of, OK, so this was an idea that I had. Let's not explore that right now. <laughs> OK, back to, back to the question. <laughs> so I have a heading one is content that's ready from, uh, for the eyes of others. And here's a thing that I wrote that ended up on a closure newsletter. But if we scroll past there and scroll past the Norwegian content, here, seeds, drafts, vague ideas, feel free to skip. So I just create a gigantic heading so you don't have to read this. What I don't address is perhaps it's, it's scary. Perhaps you don't want to share your innermost thoughts. And that's, that's fine. Yeah. So you said at the beginning uh, with this cross that you don't focus on personal knowledge management, but collective. Yeah. Right? So it's clear the focus that you have from going from text to HTML. But if you want to collaborate, I guess, you either like, let other people edit your files or let other people edit your HTML. So how would you go about that collaborative aspect on the web? And if you want to commit back to your files, how would you go about that? I would like uh, a strong notion of authorship. I would like you to write your content and me to write my content. And if I write something that uh, you like or dislike, I hope that you publish on, on your Memex. So then we can intermingle and then we can share. So I think. I don't remember the article, but sometimes when I get comments on things that I've written, I just inline them in the bottom of an article and kind of like comments and just publish them. Was that an okay answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that was awesome. I recently read the book How to Take Smart Notes by Zrenka uh, Arens, who is a researcher who is also interested in. Luhmann and mm. the book is basically about the center casting mm. method, so it seems very connected to what you mm. were saying. So yeah, I got really excited about doing that, but I also realized it's a bit of a time commitment, you know, you read a book and then you also have to write up all your notes. So I'm wondering, like, I guess two questions, do you, how do you find the time? And number two, any other super cool you know, books or uh, resources that you can recommend about this topic? Right. Uh, how do I find the time? I've spent way too much time on this. I've spent <laughs> way too much time on the system, and I've spent made way too much time on other things. Right now, my threshold of jumping into it and doing something is easy. So, if, so that's something that's kind of good. So we find the public personal journal. So if I want to write something, I go in there. And here we are, lots of dates. So I create a new heading. Aulus asks about time. Theodore says, yeah, lots. <laughs> and recompiling the journal is kind of a big thing. So we commit to everything, and we write a horrible commit message, and we push. So 
capturing individual things is easy for me now. But th there might be a threshold and making like the whole thing for yourself is a huge time sink. And I'm hoping that with some open source libraries we could make that easier. So it's a second question on recommended reading. Recommended reading. I have tried reading a few things about these things and I haven't really made it stick with the books. Uh, uh, Rome research author Connor uh, once said it should be as easy to get started with this system as with Excel. So you shouldn't be studying how to do it, you should start. And uh, having just a journal, a big file with H1 uh, tags that are dates is, is a really good thing. And then perhaps you want to have a strong reference for uh, Rich Hickey's Simple Made Easy talk. So we, we look for Simple Made Easy. And there it is. And that's an iframe. Uh, and if we go here and find Simple Made Easy, then there it is. And because it's just HTML, then I can, I can play. We can watch it together right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what I really like to see as a beginner is like having like the whole documentation of the closure ecosystem connect cross connected in, in a system, mm. like in a homogeneous system like that. Mm. Do you think that's reasonable? I mean the, the obvious question is like who would maintain that monster, but do you think it probably can be like generation and upgrading can be automated so not like pull like cards like this from like closure docs or something. Mm. Mm. So I think uh, the answer to your question, what resources should a beginner be introduced to is inherently subjective. It's subject to who is saying what and what do they want to achieve. And, I, and I'm not convinced that the answer fits inside one person's brain. So my current best bet is that we need multiple memexes that are in interlinked. So you make your thing, I make my thing, you make your beginner guide, I remix it into my guide, and then we have a few different guides. And then some experienced guy says, okay, we can skip all these things, here's a compressed version, and then we get better. So I think multiple memexes that link together can be a good step in the right direction. Okay, one last question. So in that area, have you looked at Federated Wiki? I think it's a new thing that World Cunningham is now working on. And it sounds like something along the lines of connected memexes. Right. Uh, I have not looked properly into the topic. I uh, think I have been recommended to look at it from, from other people. I'm interested in trying it. I'm curious about whether it's plain text based, whether it's for developers and for other people. The thing that I propose we make now would work horribly for non-developers. It's just all Git and plain text and HTML. You need to know, know all the tools. But I think as developers, we should have powerful tools. So yeah, my honest answer, I, I need to look that up. And I should probably note that down. <laughs>